So hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us and welcome to our webinar for today, Keep Calm and Google On, sponsored by the Legislative Research Librarians Professional Association and we're so happy to have you with us. Uh, we want this session to be as interactive as possible and we encourage you all to ask questions, answer questions, discuss and comment with each other in the chat function, you'll see it on your bottom control panel. Um, we'll have two polls that will go out during the session and there will, all be time, there will be time set aside at the end for Q&A where you can either put it into the chat function or you can just unmute yourself and, and ask the question then. Um, if you put them in the chat, I will be watching it and I'll make sure that we get to your questions. Um, and without further ado, I'm pleased to present our instructor for today, Joel Rudnick. He's the Legislative Librarian for the Delaware General Assembly. Joel, take it away. Hello, everyone. My name is Joel Rudnick. I am teaching a webinar called Keep Calm and Google On. Um, have you, let's do a start with a poll. Let's start with the poll. Poll. Have you ever used Google Advanced Search Operators? It's like watching a battle. It's so much fun, actually. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you see it? It's kind of like watching a regatta or something. <laughs> Not like I've watched one. Are we ready? OK. Well, I mean, most of you have, and I'd be kind of curious to see which ones you've looked at before. If can people put them in the chat, you know. Uh, and I'm also very humbled by the people who thought my attire was nice. I really spent a long time picking it out, and um, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we've all performed Google searches, and obviously Google is valuable as a search tool for a variety of research questions. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't exist. Um, it can work and it can work well, but sometimes you need to finesse a little bit. I mean, you guys have done Google searches before. Let's do one right now, actually. I never showed the objectives, but you all know what the objectives are, right? We're all set, okay. State legislature. It says we have 374 million results, right? The thing is, is Google will not show you all of these anyway. Like it's very, it's a very vaguely worded question, right? State legislature, I could be asking anything and I have not finessed it in any way. I did um, hack a URL to show, I gotta get the poll out of the way, to show, <laughs> How many it might show um, and it's decided not to work which is pretty neat considering I tested it earlier I'm gonna do it in Chrome but I should look at it I apologize people Well, it's gonna show you about 180 results, something like that. I'm not gonna go try to fix it right now. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing because I'm gonna show you a search tool eventually. In the search tool, sometimes things that worked before do not work and I haven't changed the code at all. Um, sometimes it's the same line of script. It's hard to know why that happens and I'm not sure why this happened, probably because of cookies or something is, is a guess, but I don't know why but there's about 180 results that will show you. It's never more than like three, four or 500. So out of those 370 million results, how many do you actually end up with? Not that many. Um, okay, but we have to learn how to hone in, how to be precise, right? And I know, you know, uh, you're all researchers of some sort or another, I imagine, because you're here. You're here, in the, you're here viewing this presentation. If we can be more precise, if we can hone in and do a directed search, we much, if we finesse Google, we could be much more efficient and um, do a better job of researching. Maybe save ourselves some stress. Okay. So let me just give a brief summary of what, what led to this webinar. 
when COVID hit, um, all of a sudden, the million questions I had every single day died down to nothing for about two or three weeks. Um, I think, and you know, I get a, I'm the only legislative librarian in Delaware. So I get questions from the public, from different agencies, from obviously from in house. And all of a sudden, just everybody, nothing was really going on. I think people were just in shock. You know, they were just in shock. Um, I mean, in house, I got questions, but the public was in shock. I wanted to spend my time doing something valuable. You know, the extra time I had, which I didn't have before, right? I didn't have it. Um, I created a search tool based on Google advanced searching. I had learned all, for a while how to hack Google URLs, how to finesse a search in Google and create a URL that would take someone to a particular place. And I just automated that, automated those finesse searches. The first time, what's, what operators were people using, Megan? Did anyone say anything? We've got some site and file type. Oh, so you've used them before. So, well, hopefully I'll teach you something. <laughs> okay, so site. Um, the syntax for site, actually it'll work better down here. The syntax for site is S-I-T-E colon with no space. Google's very particular about this. Google is not particular about a lot of things. If you, do, if you put a space after the colon, if you do not have the syntax exactly right, it will not work. Um, I use this for, the way I view these, the purpose of site, there's two main purposes. A particular set um, of sites based on the top level domain. Uh, anyone know what a top level domain is? I bet someone knows. So I can only see three heads. Hello, three heads. <laughs> one of the heads disappeared. She, one I do not want to be one of the. <laughs> one of the Natalie Brants says .gov. Teresa's got .com, .gov. Et yeah, et it's everything after. I mean, a, a top level domain or TLD is everything after that last dot, right? It can be two letters, it can be three letters. Now it could be a bunch, a bunch of different things including in non-Latinate scripts, um, which is a fairly new um, development. So to look at look at a set of sites based on the top level domain, domain or a particular site or subset of a site that you may find useful, something that's that I've heard referred to as container searching, finding the container you wish to search in. Uh, let's talk about top level domains. I'm going to have another poll. This is the last poll. There's only, there's two, only two polls, and they both show up in the very beginning. Um, can we do the next poll? Tell me what it's up. There it is. OK. When the internet was in its infancy, so like in the 80s, um, there were only seven generic top-level domains. A generic top-level top level domain is anything that's not like a country code, you know, or ARPA, which is that special case. So which, oh, you're already answering. Aren't you quick? Aren't I slow? Uh, so which were, which are currently restricted? And you can choose multiple ones. It is like watching a regatta. It's exciting. I bet people are Googling it. Gov is out front. We've yeah. got edu and mil coming in a close second. You can do it. Gov. I think some people just aren't answering. Okay, I'm, I'm going to call it done. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it works. Okay, yeah. Gov. A lot of people thought Gov, and you are correct. Let me see. Dot mil and dot edu are also correct. Dot edu is not. You can be grandfathered in the dot edu. I think it was like 2001. They, uh, they, they started putting limitations on it, but since then it has to be a post-secondary uh, accredited high ed institution in the US, um, .gov has to be US government of some sort or another. Can be local, state, federal, uh, mil for the military, Department of Defense solely. Uh, .int is the fourth one. .int is for inter, like intergovernmental um, organizations. Think like the World Health Organization, something like that. Okay, 
Well, that was fun. So let's do one of these searches. Let's say we're doing a search on environmental policy. And I hope you guys like environmental policy or think it's a neat thing at all because every search pretty much is based on environmental policy. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you'll be in for the long haul. And I don't know, you may just give up on the whole thing. Environmental policy, yeah, we get 882 million searches it results. Now, of course, we're only gonna get two or three or 400, something like that. And we get a variety, Wikipedia, Brookings, which I believe is one of the grandfathered um, EDUs. EPA, Science Direct, environmentalscience.org. It's hard to know what that is, right? Um, and as many of you, I think, figured out, 30% thought .orgs were restricted, but they're not. .orgs are not restricted at all. And in fact, I made one <laughs> just to show that to my students when I, when I worked at a, at a college. OK. Environmental policy. So we can limit it to gov, right? which is something people who work in state legislatures or want to do, uh, most likely something that'd be interested in. We limited it quite a bit. The word policy probably um, gave us more results with the .gov than otherwise, right? Policy probably pulled in some more things. So it does depend on what you're searching, obviously. Um, but you see how it does limit it down. Now, one of the problems with the .gov search is that you can get things that you, you can not pull up certain governmental organizations because they don't end in .gov. Can anyone think of any? Are we getting any? Um, Natalie says US, so .US. Yeah, yeah. .us is a country code. Is the country code actually for the United States? It's been around a long time. Um, but how? For maybe I misworded um, my question. Organ, uh, organized government organizations that oh, I didn't miss. Yeah, that have say a less restricted one than U.S. Can you think of one? Sarah says that some state agency websites are .com. Some, uh, Jerry says some government orgs use .org. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like if we look at, oh. Kansas Judicial Branch is a, you know, is a .org, right? And everyone I think has seen this one. United States Postal Service, right? So, is it limited? Yes, it is limited due to the organic nature of the World Wide Web. But is it still useful to limit to a .gov? I would say so. Um, so let's... The other big one I use is .edu. So like environmentalpolicy.edu. which gets fewer results, right? What And we have Brookings again. What I would look for in here, um, sometimes you get personal pages of people in an academic institution. There are certain signs of it. Sometimes you can pick it up, a username in the URL, um, often preceded by a tilde, which I think has another. Tilde, if any of you don't know, is above the N in um, certain languages like Spanish and Portuguese. But, and we can see we have, you know, we have some decent choices here. Now, what gets interesting is when you add more to the site, when you do more with it, and we'll get to that in a second, but I wanna ask if there are any questions. I had a quick question, Joel. Yeah. Is it important or to include or leave out the dot in .gov or .edu when you're doing this search? It's not, and that'll become, um, you'll figure out, you'll see why in a second, but it, it isn't important. No, it's not. No question. anything come it through the pretty, chat. And this is probably the simplest part of the presentation, right? I just wanted to make sure no one had any questions. And feel free to ask them, by the way, because I'm happy to answer anything if I can. Uh, so let's do the domain name. What is a domain name? I think most of you probably know. Domain name is like 
Delaware.gov, USPS.com. It is the top level domain and what's called the second level domain, right? And you can just count them off from there. That's how it works. But let's look at Delaware.gov, right? And let's use site with that. And I'll show you why. We'll start with our environmental policy. And we see we have 21,000 results. You can see how we've started to narrow down quite a bit. We've limited our search because we may be looking at government information from the state of Delaware, right? On environmental policy. So if you, could, if you look, we're getting everything before and after what we've put it in this, um, after the colon in the site. So essentially we're getting news.delaware.gov, right? We're also getting everything here, the path. We'll be talking about paths in a second. Okay. So let's talk about subdomains. Anyone know what a subdomain is? Subdomain. It sounds like someone's underwater and that's a good sound for a subdomain. That's not really what it is though. I guess the ocean could be the subdomain. Very rarely do you see them flying in the sky. Um, if you do, it's usually some kind of accident involving a giant catapult. I would look out because it can be really, really painful. Is anyone saying what a subdomain is, Megan? Yes, we've got Diana who says, what is the purpose? Oh, hers is a question. Yeah, sure. What is the purpose to use edu on your search? Well, it's funny. There are a lot of different purposes and I'm gonna to go to a specific one in a bit. Sometimes I just look to see if a, if one of the professors has a page that maybe for, for like presenting broad information, you can go to see if a professor has a page for a class. That can often be a good place to get broader information if it's a subject you're not really diving deeply into. Um, sometimes you could sometimes you could find links to papers and things, right? It's just I feel if I go to an EDU site and I get the information, if I'm going to an accredited US, and not all schools are the same, right? And we all know this, but if I'm going to an accredited institution that I think that I think highly of, especially if they have a rich program in the area, right? If their program has a lot of depth and is robust in that particular field, um, I find it's a good way to verify information or to just find out more about a subject, right? There's a, and there is a particular thing I use it for quite a bit and I will get to that in a bit. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. And then nice. we got Tom um, who said, as far as subdomains go, he said news.google.com. The news is the subdomain. Absolutely. Um, and, and, or the third level domain, right? And there could be multiple of those. It's a subset, right? It's a subdivision. I think it stands for subdivision, but it's a subset. And so now we're gonna be talking about not only searching a site, but a subset of that site, right? So if I was wanted to search the Delaware code for something, what would be the first thing I have to do? I keep asking them questions and I didn't plan on this, but it's so much more fun. Um, how would I search for the, how would I find out if I wanted to search the Delaware code, how would I go about doing it? Using what I've talked about. Start with Delaware. Yeah, well, yeah, you could start with that. I would just Google the Delaware code, right? I mean, obviously I know because like, I work here and I do this all the time, but it's delco.delaware.gov. And once I have that information, right, I can use that in my site search. I can search that particular subdomain. So I could do environmental policy site delco.delaware.gov. And now I have 429 results. Right. So we're seeing, and this is an example of container searching, right? We have found the container we want. We had to search for what that container was. We didn't know where it was. We had an idea of what we were looking for. We may not know. Um, sometimes this can be valuable without even knowing that such a container exists. If you pull a piece of data you know about, 
like something about labor statistics, you know, and you say like, oh, well, you know, I know this kind of thing exists, where would I find it? And then you Google it and you say, oh, there's a Bureau of Labor Statistics in the government. You can search that site. So it's invaluable that way. Now, after the subdomain, you often have what's called a path. I'm gonna click on one of these things. All this information here is the path, right? Think folders within folders. This is information stored in a server. So these slashes look much like the slashes you might see in uh, File Explorer, which I'll show you in a second. It's, I'll show you now, what the heck. If I did like, delco.delaware.gov, right? That initial, it's similar. If I wanted to go to the laws of Delaware. Yeah. Let's look at laws. So the laws of Delaware, right? Session laws is part of the path. And then we have GA 127 which is another part of the path. We divide our general assemblies, we number them off. The 127th General Assembly. Chapter, we chapter them off. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on. You can see delco.delaware.gov slash session laws, the slashes are backwards, right? But it's the same concept. Those things are st stored in files on a server. So let's go back to Google. And it's interesting, I typed the site before rather than after. Will it make a difference? What do you guys think? Do you think it'll make a difference? I can't do a poll because I didn't set it, we didn't set it up. Everyone says no. It will actually. Um, we don't know what that difference is though. We don't, we don't know why it's doing what it's doing. Google is a black box. What we're doing here is trying to use operators that tend to work well. Google has a ton of operators. They seem to be going, there seem to be fewer of them as time progresses, but Google operators, I try to pick the ones that work the best and most consistently, right? But as, as far as the order that puts them in, I have no idea why it chooses it. And I don't think any one person at Google knows why it would choose it that way. You know, it's a complicated process and maybe based on older searches I did. Okay. So, but if you look, we only have 191 results, right? If we wanted to search by this General Assembly, the 150th, the one we just had, actually now it's the 151st, because um, the election, we have seven results. So if I was looking at a law that was created, say, and I do this sort of thing, right? This is part of my job. If I was looking at a law that was um, enacted this past General Assembly on environmental policy, it be, Google can be a great tool. I find different things in a database than I do in Google. Is one better than the other? Databases are easier to, to, easier to um, give some more precision, but it's interesting what'll come up in a Google search that may not come up in a database. Um, the fuzzy searching can come in handy fuzzy searching environmental policy, there may be a different word for it. And that's what it's pulling up. If you see it's pulling up rules, right? It thinks policy and rules are the same thing. Are they? Not really, I could argue not, but Google thinks they are. So it's interesting how I pulled something else up. And if you can see, there is some repetition. Um, here's a PDF of chapter 243. Oh, I thought I saw it. I guess not. Oh, we can do this. <laughs> now this is interesting, right? A PDF and a non-PDF HTML format of chapter 176. Why aren't they all repeated? They all have PDFs, they all have HTML versions. Only Google knows. 
So we've seen what the power of a path can do, what we can do if we limit to a path, right? If we limit to a path that we know we're searching for something along, along, along certain lines in a certain container, we can really drill down and get what we wish to have. Um, it can be very efficient and knowing how your site is set up, and we'll get into that, can be particularly valuable in this. Now, what if I just wanted to copy an address? Like, what if I just wanted to copy where we'll do? The Delaware State Housing Authority. What if I just wanted to copy that? See, I was looking for rental applications. Is this a good? Is this something that'll be valuable? What do you think? Yes, no, maybe so. I wish I could see more heads. It is valuable, right? But the problem is, it's not going to get any of the subdomains. Um, it's going to be looking for things before the H or before the W, actually. It's going to be looking for everything before and after our site, right? We did site www.destatehousing.com. It's going to look for everything before and after that. If I were to take out the www, we see there's a subdomain called securedstatehousing.com, right? Where we could find the actual applications as opposed to the other where we could link to them. It's interesting how I use the word interesting a lot in this conversation. I normally don't. It's interesting how often I use the word interesting. Um, maybe I'll do a longitudinal study amongst people that are me and how often they use the word interesting in an interesting way or a non-interesting way as the case may be. Okay. Let us, we're going to, we're going to conclude um, on site for now. Anyone have any questions before I do so? Yes, we do have um, a few questions. We've got okay. from Tom. Is it better to put site before or after the search since it does affect it? It does. I don't know. And, and again, that's the, the one thing is Google's algorithm is mysterious to everyone, right? It's an algorithm that's completely complex, a black box that changes we had we don't even know how often it changes you know some of it could be done manually we've seen this i don't know how many of you remember i'd say like a decade ago if you googled jew right all the first page would be anti-semitic results the entire thing people complained and it was pulled off they changed it right they changed one person went and made that happen it's not one person, but a programmer, let's say, or a group of programmers made that happen. So they can go in and tweak it. A lot of their tweaking has to do with search histories, right? Tweaking the algorithm, a lot of it has to do with profitability. In fact, I would argue all of it has to do with profitability. Um, Google's job, as far as Google sees it, is not to help us out. Google is here to make money. Um, and keeping its algorithm complex and maybe even keeping it secret helps it make money, right? Sometimes pulling an operator makes it make money. There are operators I used to use that are no longer useful. Uh, link, you could search for who linked to a page. It was pretty neat. Um, any other questions? Yes, we have another from Sabah asking, do you find it helpful to clear your cache every so often to force a more precise search? You can. Um, I'm not sure. It's hard to know how much they're tracking, right? Or how well they're tracking. You can determine who someone is generally from someone's browser settings and location. Um, so unless you're, unless you're defaulting your browser settings every time you search, you know, if you've made any tweaks here and there, it's pretty easy to locate who someone is, which kind of scares me for uh, using these things to search 
in a state legislature. It does strike me as a, something that could be a problem. I want to show you something while we're talking about this then. You guys ever hear of start page? Anyone hear of this? They paid for Google's algorithm and they use it, but they run everything through a VPN. So it's totally untraceable. <laughs> so that would get you a filter free search, right? Um, this is an unfiltered search. And you could look at it, you could go in through an anonymous view. You could pick where these servers are located that you're going through. You can do all kinds of neat things. Um, one reason, there's a couple reasons I didn't use start page for my eventual project that I'm gonna show you, but, and there are good reasons because no one would know what it was and I didn't think people would wanna use it. Also the URLs seem to be a little difficult to parse. Um, it might be something I'll work on later on though. But yeah, no, I think it would be helpful to clear the cache. I just don't think it's gonna solve all your problems. You know, it'd be nice. Have, oh, someone's asking if the site search, does that work on the, um, the page you were just on, the start page? It does, I believe. Let's look. Yeah. It, 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 it pay, they pay for the algorithm as far as I know. They pay for Google's algorithm. I came across this, across this a year or two ago in a, on the website Search Engine Watch. They put out a list every so often of alternative search engines. Some of them are alternative in, in what they search, like Giphy or Jiffy or whatever. You can search uh, GIFs. I don't, even, I don't even know how to say that extension. Am I saying it right? I'm old. <laughs> like, that was a terrible thing to say, but I feel like I should know this. I feel like I should know this. Um, we have one more uh, question yeah. about just specifically why you left out the www on the previous search where it was not giving you the results that you wanted. So, uh, explain, let's go back. So we were in Google, right? And we were doing sites, www, oh. Why did I leave out www? Oh, I know. Okay, I know what you're talking about. We left out the www because if you look, it looks for everything before and after what you put in the site operator, what you put after the site operator, after that colon. Secure.destatehousing.com, where we found the application, is not going to work well is not going to be found this way with the site with the site operator because www is technically a subdomain is technically a subdomain of delawarestatehousing.com right if it were secure.www.destatehousing.com it would pick that up but it won't pick it up from here it ignores the protocol which is the http it'll ignore that but otherwise it it's got you're kind of limiting yourself. And so the idea is to limit yourself but not limit yourself in a way that doesn't work for you. Um, that's interesting, right? Okay, I had a professor that used to write Latin poetry. And I said, don't you find it limiting to be constricted by the grammar? He's like, no, it's actually kind of freeing to be constricted or restricted that way. And I was like, it's, I, it's profound. And it's really, an, it's really a heuristic process. You're really looking at different things and saying, it's no, not one size fits all. You reach into one search and say, how am I gonna do this? You reach to another, how am I gonna do that, right? Let us go to file type. Are you guys ready to go to file type? I'm ready to go to file type, yay. Okay. And now some of you have used file type before. What do you usually use it for? What extensions? File type will get you extensions. I'm kind of curious what people have done. You guys know what file extensions are? I'm sure you do, any of you. Yeah, we've got mostly PDFs from Eddie. Jerry says XLS dot and, and PowerPoint. Yeah. Natalie, one of the Natalie's says PDF and XLS. Yeah, th honestly, those are the ones I use too. Um, there are a few more it can search. It's a very limited list. There's a few more you can search, but the ones that come up the most often are PDFs, um, 
Excel files and PowerPoints. For a PDF, I usually use this for, say, reports of some sort. Reports usually show up in a PDF file. There's also certain other things like forms, if you're searching for something like that. Um, if we did XLS, we can, that's when you're looking for data of some sort, right? We're trying to pull out some data. Um, the XLS will get different formats. It'll get XLSX. It'll get CSV files, which are very similar to um, XLS files. Basically, you're pulling things that you can put into a spreadsheet, right? That's what you're getting. I wouldn't put the X on the end of here. It doesn't like it and doesn't work very well. Um, just use the XLS. The PowerPoint's an interesting case. If you're just looking for boiled down information, right? A PowerPoint, someone's presenting, someone's presenting on a topic. It can be tricky because as, as you know, PowerPoints don't always hold all the information and I don't think they should, but it is interesting. We can combine these with Gov though. And that's when it gets really neat, right? We found like 2000 PowerPoints on environmental policy that are file types, PowerPoints that are, that are I don't, whatever, you've seen it. You can see it on the screen. I'm not gonna try to say it again. Um, I you really, really like this for, you won't get a lot of them, but the Excel files, you know, that's when it gets really interesting. In fact, we do environmental policy from the EPA. Why not? Right? Now I have 130. And this kind of data um, from a government source tends to be really complex and it's hard to know what the metadata is. It's hard to know what the different terms mean. You kind of have to dive from one source to another, but once you do, you can figure out a lot of different, a lot of different stuff, a lot of different things, right? It's a, it's an excellent tool in that way. What I like to do, or well, anyone have any questions about file type? It's pretty straightforward, and it's nice to combine it with different things. There, there is another list you, can, I can send out a list um, afterwards of the various extensions it can search. I don't think many of you will come up besides uh, PDF, Excel files, and PowerPoints. Okay, let's do negation. What do you guys think of with the word negation? What if we wanted to take something out, right? Remove something, right? Um. Tom says it excludes certain words. It omits sites, not X. Right. So we can do, say we're doing environmental policy and for some, we didn't want, I don't know, whatever I'm blanking now, let's do a greenhouse. We could take out that word. Negation works sort of well. It's not completely consistent. Where it works best, though, is when you combine it with some of the other um, operators. So if we were looking for environmental policy from a government site, but we didn't want it to be about Delaware, let's say, right? You get a bunch of results. The problem with this is you may want some things on Delaware that are in 50 state surveys, something like that. Right, Delaware is mentioned, but it's not what it's all about. What's interesting, though, is if you use .gov, but you say, well, let's take out Delaware.gov, right? We want information. Say I wanted information on what other governments were doing or what the federal government was doing, and I didn't want it to be from our own state. I could do it this way. And again, I could limit the file type PDF and so on and so on and so on. There, that brings us to a couple special cases I would like to show you when you kind of pull it all together and use the different operators. One is resource evaluation. Let's say you've heard of this new thing called Westlaw, right? You're like, okay, what are people saying about Westlaw? Well, Westlaw is going to say things about Westlaw. We all know that, right? In fact, they're doing it all through here. Um, what if you wanted to know what other people are saying? They're like, I'm thinking about purchasing this product. I've heard on the word on the street is it's kind of useful. Um, I'd never heard of it before, but it's so neato. So we got rid of Westlaw.com, right? 
We're still getting Thomson Reuters. Oh, we didn't. Oh, because I did site instead of no minus site. <laughs> So now we're getting like the Wikipedia page. We're still getting Thomson Reuters, right? So we can get rid of that if we wanted to. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. So now we're drilling down a little bit, right? People are what are, what are people saying about Westlaw that aren't Westlaw? You're still going to get a Twitter page and things like that. And you could take those out if you wished. That kind of resource evaluation I find really helpful. Um, one one thing that can you you could also do research, resource evaluation in, and that uses these operators is our libguides. Um, how many librarians do we have, Megan? More than I can count. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good answer. Look at that evasive answer. <laughs> Dodge that We've one. Got some hands going up. We've got okay. Karen. There you go. Yeah, I mean, a libguide. If you're not a librarian or otherwise not, or maybe some of the non-librarians have heard of libguides. They're research guides. They're on a platform where libraries can put research guides on the web they tend at an academic institution which i use this for a lot and for the bigger public libraries you can search to see if any lib guys have mentioned a resource right see a lot of times i come across a resource i've never heard of i'm like well is this valuable is this something i want to look at this site is this site valuable to me but the other thing let's say you have no idea where to start searching i could do environmental policy site edu libguide and i i can come up with libguides on environmental policy right and this is a way where you can really you can find out what resources they're using like let's say we're looking at U.S. policy and legislation on this libguide. This is what they look like, by the way. They can look various ways, but they organize the information, usually with tabs. I'm like, oh, I never thought to look in govtrack.us. You know, it may be a resource you've never heard of. Congressional Research Service reports. Um, the locks mean you cannot get into it unless you're a student or a faculty member at that university. But how about foreign relations of the United States, 1861 to 1958? Now, I had no idea this was a thing, right? And maybe some of you did. But this is something you can use. And I would not have known about it if it weren't for, if it weren't for this libguide, right? That lib, the libguide search is an excellent way to find resources that you may not have thought about otherwise. Any questions before I go on? Um, someone's asking if you could show the libguide search one more time in the Google search. Yeah, sure. It did go kind of quickly. So what I did was the keywords, right, which you're going to find in any search, environmental policy, site colon edu, because generally bigger public libraries will have excellent libguides, like New York Public Library. You know, you're going to find excellent libguides on there. Um, Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh, but where, but universities, there tend to be more things to pick from and you're just gonna have libguide. Um, you could do guide. One thing you could do though, is search how their libguide URLs are arranged and do a site based on that, right? Like I could go back here and say, oh, they call it libguides.ucsd.edu. And if I wanted to search just, let's say I was looking for a libguide from a certain university, that had a program that I thought was really special and I thought they might have the information, then I could do it that way. But generally I'm just doing a broader search. Anything else? Uh, Sarah's asking, you put environmental policy before the site.edu and libguides after. Is there any particular reason for that order? Um, it was organically developed by me right now. The thing is, 
there's not. And again, I don't know how it works. Some things in Google clearly don't work the way they say they're going to. Um, it's hard to understand because one of the big, um, one thing that really stymies me is that when you're doing a Google search, the limitation on the results. So Google can handle the word or, this or that. It says it can. But I've done an or search where I should come up with more results, a greater number, and I come up with fewer. You know, A or B gives me fewer than either A or B. That doesn't make any sense. But the reason is I think they're limit, limiting the results. I have no idea how this works. I have no idea how this algorithm was developed, right? I have no idea how it's been tweaked in the past three days, how much is tracking me based on what I did just a second ago, right? If I move libguide to the front, I'm going to get different results. I will. Okay. So sometimes it's worth it just to play around with the results, you know, but you can never go back to that first search because it already knows you did the first one. So you're kind of locked in when you do that first search. You could go to a different computer in a different state <laughs> under an assumed name. Okay. Now, one of the cool things about these is you can send them to people if you develop a, a URL that you find useful, right? You can send them to people. Um, when I first when I first started thinking about these things, you couldn't send them to people. It wouldn't take, it wouldn't do everything. You would copy the URL, I would send it off to somebody and it wouldn't replicate the search. In some cases it still may not. Um, you know, I really don't know. Let's look at a URL. Let's a Google URL. Let's copy and paste it to a Word document. You guys see that, right? Okay. That's heinous. That's an awful, awful thing. I mean, how much of this is really useful to us? How much of this really tells you what's going on? Almost nothing. And in fact, if I do this search again, right? Let's go to different, oh, let me not do it that way. Let's do this. Open up a different Google tab with a different, see if it makes a liar out of me. And there are differences, right? Why are those differences there? This one's much shorter. Um, I don't know why. I can't tell you. What I can tell you is I've played around with this, done some Googling and found out what is strictly necessary for a Google URL. It's very little of this. You can see, I mean, let's just show instead of talk, right? Google.com, that's necessary. Otherwise, it's not a Google search. It's a different search. You're somewhere else. You want the term search in there. And I have this, there's a handout, by the way, that Megan is going to send out to everybody that has this um, URL laid out and some more information. There's a question mark. The question mark marks what's a, called a query string. It's like a query in a database. It's pretty standard language for a URL. Did I always know this? No, I looked it up not that long ago. <laughs> like when playing around with this stuff, um, this Q, this is necessary. The Q is a parameter. Um, Google searches are broken down in the parameters. <laughs> These parameters, there is there like a full list of them? I don't think there is. There's not a full list of Google operators that's official. People create them. You know who looks at these parameters? Search engine optimization people. The people that try to figure out how to get results in the top in the top of a Google search. So the Q is the parameter that says what the keywords that it's feeding into Google actually are. And now what does it equal? 
8 equals keep common Google on. <laughs> or the spaces are replaced by pluses. This is all you need. This is it. You know, everything else, it's hard to know. It's hard to know what it's for. Tweaking the algorithm, absolutely. Tracking, probably. Advertising, all those things, right? Sometimes I'll find like pieces are the same and pieces aren't. I have no idea why, you know? I don't. It's very strange. I When I send URLs to researchers where I work, I send them clean URLs, ones that look like this. URL is a web address. I send them things like this. Of course, if you send them through email, they're not clean anymore anyway. I'm taking too much time, aren't I, Megan? Yeah, OK, we're going to. Sorry, guys. Let's go to the tool that I created. I apologize, folks. Let's go to our site first and show how the tool was developed a little bit. So if I wanted to search Delaware code, what I ended up, there was a problem. There was no, there was no easy way to do this within Google, right? I started examining the different URLs. I have this thing, how do I get rid of this? If you have the pictures or the, on the bottom of your screen or anything from Zoom on the bottom of your screen, you might want to get rid of it. Otherwise this won't show up. But if you look at the bottom left, you can see a series of URLs, right? Title three, title four, title five, title six, title seven, and so on. If you're doing something like this, I would test every single one. Let's say we're interested in conservation since we're talking about environmental policy. You can see the different chapters, CO01, CO02, and so on. Knowing how these are set up, I can create a search, right? If I wanted to search Title Seven, I could do site delco.delaware.gov slash Title Seven and do my keywords. Thinking along those lines, I created a search tool in Excel of all things. Uh, and it looks like this. It's really, really ugly because Excel is not what you're supposed to build these things in. Uh, I had links to go to our, you know, go to Lexis Advanced because I thought it'd be pretty cool. But let's, if we're searching the Delaware code, I developed searches for all these things that are customized, right? They're customized searches that I've created. We could search a particular title. We could search the whole thing. Let's search, let's do the whole thing actually. And then we could pick anything. Oh, someone, can I have something from the audience? I'll just make something up because we're running out of time. How about environmental policy? And so to create this mega search I created, right? It's look at environmental policy and site delco.delaware.gov. And it's going to take out a bunch of different stuff that kept coming up in my searches. I tried to make this as refined as possible, right? I wanted it to pull up everything, but not, but nothing that I didn't want. So I wanted to take out the session loss because I'm particularly looking at code in this case. And since it gets everything before or after this, it would have gotten the session laws. I found some odd things like uh, e-publication site, help, all those things you might not think would come up. I found a test site on there. I got rid of that. The file type PDF, I was finding multiples of the same result because of a PDF and an HTML version. So I took out the PDFs. So everything I looked was brand spank and new, right? And you can see that more things are coming up for Title 29, at least the beginning, than Title 7, which is where we'd normally, well, you don't know the Delaware code, but I know the Delaware code where I normally expect to see it. Uh, this was really fun to make and help my Mine stays sane in a really difficult time. But I can show you. Megan, if you have to pull this, you just let me know. 
We can go. I'll just let folks know that we are recording. We will make it available to folks afterwards. Okay. Um, but if you want to remain on and, and see the rest of this, please do. And we will still make time for question and answer at the end. Okay. So you could see like the different forms on here. These are just plugs, you, you know, plug and play, graphical user interface. You can move things around. But the, the, the uh, in the back of it all is all these pieces of code, which I had no idea how to make when I started doing this. I use Google to find out how to create Google URLs in an automated way. Um, I start with the beginning. Let's look at google.com search question mark at Q equals, which is in every single one, right? When I go to a particular source, I start adding more things. I look at the title and I say, okay, I created a, a variable. I declare this variable. H finish means nothing if I don't tell it what it is. If I don't say H finish is no particular meaning outside of this. I created that. You could name it anything you wanted. It's a variable. It equals title and a number based on what they choose. If you look, it's site delco.delaware.gov slash title one, title two, title three, title four, title five. That's what this is. And then everything else, right? Uh, it was, to create this, you have to look at how your particular source is set up. What I have done here would not work for exactly the same way for your site. You'd have to see how your, your use site is structured. A site index can really help with this. Anyone want to see anything in particular on the the machine I built? I keep saying I like it's. I guess I am proud. I look, I'm looking at Megan. She's on the screen over here for me, but I am proud. Uh, anyone want to see anything in particular? Anything? Because I'll tell you what. I am happy to talk about this one on one with anyone that wants to. Contact information is going to be available on the handout. Megan will be sending out the handout. I'd be happy to walk th anyone through anything on any of this stuff, really. I, I, I'll make the time if you need it. Because uh, I, I put it in the in the chat box twice, but I will also send the handout out in a follow up email. We have a question from Jerry. Yeah. He says, does the Google custom search still work to create something different than you created? Uh, but still search within your own set boundaries. I'm not sure which, like would the tool, I, is it the tool or the parameters? Like like the, the keywords, either one, honestly. I'll, honestly, no, it won't. The ideas will, the broader ideas of using site. But if I go to a different, if I go to a different state um, and look up their assembly or their legislature and see how their site is set up, it'll almost definitely be set up differently. If it's set up so that you have one domain or subdomain and each title's in a separate path, it'll work. If not, it won't. Um, it's an organic process. It's heuristic. You try it out, you see what works. You explore, I've changed this a billion times already. And I use this tool almost every day in my research, almost every single day. Um, and it saved me a lot of time. And he clarified, he said he thinks parameters say search in 19 environmental policy sites I found to be particularly useful, like to narrow it down to specific sites. Yes, um, you can. You would have to create code that said, let me think. You'd have to use an or search, which like I said, doesn't work all that well. My guess is if you combine it with Like, let's say we're looking at, um, this should work theoretically. Uh, 
if any Delaware ones are going to come up in this, in this first search. That should work. I would test it out and make sure. Um, or is really tricky with Google. With the site, since the site is so specific and tends to work more than any other operator they have, uh, I think this should probably work. Um, where you could search, you could create a coding tool then that would create this search, right? You could do that. Anything else? Jerry says, thank you. Um, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them into the chat. You can also unmute yourself. And yeah, I would like to talk to questions. somebody. You know, this was, <laughs> this was difficult because I didn't get to really talk to anybody. Um, let me move the people over. Hello, people. Anyone want to say anything? Because I would love to talk with y'all. No, I took too long. Oh, well, I'm a sad man. Oh, good. We still got a good group of folks. Um, but yeah, I just, I also want to say that if, if you're trying this out or, you know, you are as impressed with Joel's tool as I was when he showed me and you want to talk to him in more detail, because I know from my perspective that spreadsheet and the Excel doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so, you know, I know that both Joel and I are available to talk. Joel's probably more useful than I am. Um, On this particular topic, Megan, let's be, let's be fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I do have a question. Yeah. Um, if, if they can give you specific examples to search for. And yeah, absolutely. See what it looks like. I thought about doing that. It's kind of hard to be put on the spot, but I will try. Let's do it. Anyone want to Jerry, ask for this? Yeah, so Jerry is leaving, but he wanted to say the blue hen on top of Delaware's old capital is quite a sight. <laughs> um, and then we have um, a possible, let's see, an example. How about looking for a site that have information on treatment programs in state prisons? So if you, okay. if someone came to you and said, I want information on treatment programs in state prisons from a specific sites, what would you do? Well, the first thing I would do is see if there's a federal, a federal program that the states report to. You know, that, that, that's what, for something like that, if I'm doing a 50 state, like state, states in general, if I was looking at a particular state, I would Google their Department of Correction, right? Something like that. See if they have another agency that's involved. Uh, do we have a particular site, a state we're working on, or just in general? Arizona. Arizona. Well, first thing I have to do is figure out what the Arizona URL is. Don't tell me. I want to see if I can figure it out. It actually pretty much has to by uh, it's az.gov, but I got to get the, your pictures out, even though I wanted your pictures. Okay, az.gov. So now it's like a game actually at this point. So you do like site az.gov, it might not work because this, sometimes you do have to have the keywords before just because it's not sure what you're doing, the browser, if you put site first. Um, let's say corrections. It was corrections we were working on, right? Okay, so now I have corrections on az.gov. So I have that information. This is a great idea, by the way. This is much more illustrative than what I was doing. Uh, so we can do site corrections.az.gov treatment program. Oh, there you go. And we start getting things, right? And if we wanted to report, I'd probably limit to like file type.pdf. And, you know, and then I, I have things. <laughs> Does that make any sense? And then it's like any other search, right? And you have to keep in mind also, though, that this may be stored elsewhere. It may not be in the Department of Corrections, right? Could be somewhere else. It's what you do have to play around with it. Did that make sense? Can you further, can you make that go to a further more specific search with what you have there? So you have the file type.pdf um, or do you go to treatment program it depends. I know what you're saying. I think I know what you're saying. Like a different, a path or something. 
Well, yeah, if like, okay, because we have sex offender and addiction, and right. I'm studying or looking into specifically cardiac treatment. Okay, well, I'm going to get rid of the PDF for a second, just because those links open a PDF rather than a straight URL. Okay, thank um, you. We only got three, right? That's a problem um, for, as far as our searches go. So what I might do then, right, is just do the az.gov. And also keep in mind, there may be things under arizona.gov that aren't coming up. Those things do happen. Like you could, it's complicated. Um, and I'm gonna say prison, okay, or corrections or prison, right? No great matches. Let's do heart. Let's and let's do medical. Right now, five fifty-five is not a propitious number, uh, and they are coming up under corrections. So what we could do then is we could make this corrections.az.gov. Right, it turned out we may have been in the right place after all. No. See, this is where Google gets my goat, right? Clearly, there were ones that cor for corrections that were coming up. It has to do with the algorithm. It has to do with the fact that they don't pull in every single result. And uh, I have to say, it makes me upset. You have a suggestion for using substance abuse as a possible keyword. OK, well, well yeah, OK, never mind. I guess I mis mistook the search. Um, right, and then we could do cardiac. Oh. Okay, so we have some things here, right? It's, and they're mostly PDFs. Uh, it's hard to know what you'll find. And a lot of times you have to play around with it. And sometimes I've noticed like the Department of Corrections, sometimes it's harder to find the data than say some other some other agencies. Uh, sometimes calling someone at the Department of Corrections is more useful. I, I used to use this when I taught in at a college because I had a lot of human services students that would come to the library and say like, hey, you know, I need I need something from the Department of Corrections on such a on such a topic. I could get data from them, or I would tell them to get the data from someone at the Department of Corrections. It's not that it's not public information; it just might not be on the site. That does happen. I think corrections is one of those subjects that tends not to appear as much, um, and that could be different state by state, of course. Did I answer anyone's question? Okay. Yeah, yeah, she thinks. And one thing I like about using people as a resource is that they can pull things together that are the connectivity, the fact that they know something about something else and can pull all that information together in a way that that would take you days to do otherwise. Uh, so am I wrapping up? What am I doing? Yeah, I yeah. think we've got I mean, great discussion, good questions. Um, I'm not seeing anything else really coming in. How many um, people are left? <laughs> like five? 60 people. Oh I mean, my God. Like, you can interested. trust strippers. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up and just say like what I got from this project. Okay. I used the word organic a lot during this. Appreciating your, this is a Delaware Creek, by the way. Uh, this is White Clay Creek. I have been to it a billion times uh, and it's beautiful. And Delaware is very flat, by the way, if you didn't know that. If you look, <laughs> Delaware is very flat. Uh, appreciating the organic. The whole process is organic. You know, the people who created the websites built those websites around a certain idea. Google built this algorithm in some mysterious way around a certain idea. You know, they have differing values, right? Those values may change at a moment's notice, a different search engine would have different values, depending on the company. The, the state 
you know, may have a different idea depending on what state you're going to and how, how to set up a website, how to organize it. Heraclitus, I'm going to talk about Heraclitus because Heraclitus said, well, he's often quoted as saying, you can't step in the same river twice. Um, it's actually a longer fragment that, that comes from that says, because the river, the river won't be the same and the person won't be the same, right? Um, not to make it banal, but like, <laughs> if Google is the person and the site is the river, kind of works out okay, right? But appreciating the organic, always learning. I didn't know how to do most of this when I started. Preparing for this presentation also had me learn a bunch of stuff, right? I did not know, and I enjoyed doing that. You know, I think most people become librarians or other researchers because they like looking things up, because they enjoy finding information um, and putting in the time. I created a tool that took some time to create, took a good bit, and I've tweaked it over. I tweaked it five minutes before this started, <laughs> right? I, I'm all about putting in the time, working on the fundamentals in order to build something both for myself and maybe something in the future, some people in the future. This, this particular project probably won't work in the future. You know, not really. There's too many variables. Not immediate future, yes. Long-term future, never. But it helps me day to day. And I put in that time and I save time almost every day when I use it. That's all I got to say. Great. Well, I hope that you all will join me in thanking Joel for taking the time to explain all of this for me. I know my, my searches have become more fruitful and productive since I've started learning these tricks from him. Um, and other than that, on behalf of NCSL and LRL, thank you for your attendance and participating. Like I said, there will be a recording. I'll send out a follow-up once that's ready to go. Um, please contact Joel or I if you have any questions. And with that said, take care and remember to keep calm and Google on everyone. <laughs>